Hey, what's going on everyone? So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to add in basic audio calling functionality into your website using the Agora Web SDK. So this is gonna be a short video where we just focus on that basic integration, uh, but this video is actually part of a mini series where we're building out an application with these audio chat rooms. So basically a user can join any room with a room name and then join that room and speak to other users. So that's the mini series, but you don't have to follow along with that series if you just wanna learn this basic functionality here uh, I will catch you up and explain where all the code is coming from and what we've set up so far which isn't much but you should be able to follow along understand that part and then just continue with this so let's do a quick recap of what you need to get started because this is one of the first videos in that series and uh, we'll continue from there so first of all uh, make sure you have an account on agora.io so I'll just go ahead and open the website up here make sure you go to agora.io create an account and in your Agora account, you're gonna have this console and you're gonna to need to create an app with Agora first. So this is how Agora tracks your usage minutes and everything you're doing within your app. So make sure you go to this project management tab, go ahead and create an app here and call it something like uh, voice rooms or just give it some kind of name here. As far as a use case, uh, let's just go ahead and select social. I actually already have an app ID created, but I wanna show you something very important here, and that is the authentication mechanism. So if you're following this tutorial, you are gonna need to make sure that you have this authentication mechanism set up. That is the app ID only mode. That is very important because if you select this one, which is something that you should actually use for production, uh, this requires an, a token, and this is something that we're not actually gonna use in this specific mini series. So we're not gonna focus on that token part. We wanna authenticate only with an app ID, which isn't really secure, but we're just trying to build out this demo. So we're gonna focus on that. So if you select this one, uh, you're gonna have issues in this series. So don't select this one for now. Okay, so go ahead and create your app. Once you do, you're gonna see your app right here. There's a list of apps. Uh, go ahead and click this, uh, Click this app ID section, so just copy that. That's gonna give you that app ID, and this is what you're gonna use. So once we get to that part in the video, make sure that is the app ID you're using, and that's your Agora app. So uh, as far as the actual Agora documentation, let's go to the website again. Uh, I wanna make sure you know where to find the documentation and the API reference. So let's just jump to documentation. Uh, we have all these different SDKs and what we're doing here is gonna be voice calling. So this is part of the Agora RTC SDK. There are two core SDKs, there's RTM and RTC. Uh, the RTM one is now signaling, but we'll talk about that one later. So this is the documentation for voice calling. If you go to the API reference, uh, specifically select web, go to web SDK. This is where you're gonna see all those methods that we're working with, and this is gonna be very important. So a lot of these are gonna be familiar to you. Uh, we're gonna see this create client method, that's very important. That's how we kick off our connection with our client object. We'll see methods for creating microphone and audio tracks, creating video tracks, because you could do video calling with Agora, and so on. So there's all these methods here uh, to respond to when users join, leave a, uh, a specific room. So this is what we'll be referring to, and it's very important to know where this is at. So when you're following along, to, along with the video, you can always go back to this. So let's go ahead and jump into the code we have so far, and we'll just start building this out. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off from in the last video and I'll just do a quick recap. So this is the link to the GitHub repo with all the source code. If you're new to this series, you're gonna wanna go ahead and find that link down in the video description. And specifically, you're gonna want this folder right here. This will give us a source code to this specific video here. So if you're following that series, you remember that we have this guide.md file and that was what we followed in the last video to build our boilerplate code. So we set up everything with Vite, so that's something to take note of. And we just added in some HTML and CSS, and we are at this section right here where we are getting started with Agora. So that's all we did in the last video for anybody new to this series. Uh, this is our application, so we just added in that styling so you can actually use that GitHub repo, copy and paste this if you want. Otherwise, just follow along with the actual lesson. Uh, and we just added in some HTML here. We quickly just created this container wrapper and we added everything in. We have a room header that gives us information with all the buttons that we need and a form with just a submit button. So not much to it. Uh, and then we also just created this members div where we're adding members to. So again, that's all we did, not much to it. Let's go ahead and continue from there. So we'll go back to the guide.md file. And right now we need to install the Agora RTC SDK. So let's go ahead and run that install. So it's Agora RTC SDK-NG. NG stands for new generation. 
Okay, so we'll run that install. So we'll do npm install agora-rtc-sdk-ng. And that should add that to our package.json file. So that's added in here somewhere. There we go. So we have Agora added and we can start building out this application. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is go into main.js. So this is all linked up and we need to first configure Agora and just make sure that uh, all those credentials are added in. And then we start creating that client object that we're gonna use all that functionality from. So the first thing I wanna do here is go ahead and make an import for the Agora RTC class here. And this is that global entry point to our RTC SDK. And this is what gives us access to all those methods that we saw within the API reference to do what we need to do here. So next, what I wanna do is go ahead and create my basic configuration here to the actual app that we created within our Agora console. So first thing I need is my app ID and I'm actually gonna add mine in, but I'm gonna hide it for now. So we're just gonna do your app ID. And just for this tutorial, go ahead and add yours in right here or maybe add it into the next file that we're about to add. But this is gonna be the app ID that was attached to that specific project. So we're gonna need to add that in here somewhere. So I'll add that in a second, but we're gonna create the variable. Uh, next, we're gonna need a token. Now, when we created that app ID, we specifically specified the authentication mechanism to app ID only, and we don't need a token for this specific demo app. So we're gonna still create the variable, but we're just gonna set that value to null. So because we set that when we created our app, adding in null right here actually works just fine. And the next thing I need to do is create a UID for every single user uh, within a specific channel. So when we're joining specific rooms, every user needs a unique identifier. So some kind of ID for that specific user. So we're gonna go ahead and create an RTC UID and go ahead and prefix it with RTC because we're gonna use the Agora RTM SDK and that user will also need an ID. So I specifically wanna make sure we can differentiate those two IDs. So for this value, if you actually go to this guide.md file, I actually have a method here, I just don't wanna write it out. Uh, we're gonna generate a random number for the RTC SDK, that UID needs to be a 32-bit integer. So it has to be an integer. Let's go ahead and do that. This is gonna generate a random number. It's gonna make it very large. That way there's a chance that we're not gonna, or a good chance that each ID will be unique. And we can also add in security checks just to make sure no user has a duplicate ID. Uh, but we're not gonna focus on that. That should give us a big enough number to randomize those specific UIDs. Now, as far as the configuration, let's go ahead and create a room ID. And I'm using let for a reason because later on, we're actually gonna set this value dynamically. But right now, we're only gonna be able to join one room. So this is that specific room ID here or the channel name, and we're just gonna call it main. So later on, this would be something like uh, DevRel that we saw in that uh, introduction video or any name that you provided or some kind of generic generated name. Uh, for now, it's only one channel name. We'll work on this later. And the next thing I wanna do is create an object that stores my audio tracks for the local user, that's gonna be me, and any remote user that joins this specific channel. So that means anyone else that joins the channel, I wanna store their tracks here too, so we can actually remove them, mute them if we need, and do all sorts of stuff like that. So we actually want access to those. And this is gonna be local audio tracks. And for the local user, this value is just gonna be set to null. So this will be my audio tracks here when I join a room. And then we'll just do remote audio tracks and we're just going to make this a key value pair so anytime a user joins the key will be their uid and then the tracks will be attached to that uid so we can actually identify that user so let's see next we want to go ahead and add in an rtc client so this client will be their user so we actually create a client object and then we use this client to log in to join a specific room specific room to publish our tracks and so on so we created that client we haven't set it yet we're about to do that next so really quick, I wanna set my app ID, but for the purpose of this video, I don't wanna to have to blur this out every time I scroll to this point. You could put yours directly right here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put mine into a new file. So I could use environment variables. At this point, what I'm gonna do is just create a file called appid.js, and then we're just gonna create it here, export it, and then bring it into that file. So app ID, we're gonna go ahead and actually paste in my real app ID. I'll blur this out. And then we're gonna do export default. And that's gonna be my app ID. And this way I can actually close this file out and we never have to access this again. And then we just need to make that import. That's gonna be app ID from, and we're just gonna go back one file to app ID.js. So that's with a capital I right there, .js. 
and I believe that should take care of it. Yeah, so that should bring in my app ID and at this point I should be ready to go ahead and actually initialize my client. So we're gonna go ahead and create a function here and that's gonna create my client and grab my local audio tracks and actually set it into this value. So we're ready to go to that point here. So let's go ahead and jump in and let's go ahead and call this function uh, init RTC. So we're gonna initialize our RTC client. I'll just make it an async function out of habit here. And the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and grab this client object and set this value. So we're gonna do RTC client, and this is gonna be equal to Agora RTC. So we're gonna take that Agora RTC class that we imported at the top here, and we're just gonna go ahead and call the create client method. So this create client method takes in a few parameters. So the first thing we're gonna need is gonna be the mode, and this is either gonna be RTC or live. So we're just gonna do RTC. And then we're gonna set the codec here. So we're just gonna do codec. And this is just gonna be VP8. So we won't go into specifics here, but that creates our Agora client here. And now we're ready to move on. So now we can actually use this client and I'm gonna call the await method here. And we're just gonna do RTC client. And what, do you, what I wanna do here is I actually wanna join a channel. So we're gonna call the join method. So that client gives us access to this join method. And in order to join a specific channel or create a channel, we're gonna need some of our credentials and we're gonna use what we set up here. So we're gonna use our RTC UID, our token, and our app ID. So the first thing we're gonna need is gonna be our app ID. Then we're gonna need our room ID. So we need to specify the room ID itself. What room do we wanna join or create? That is gonna be main. Uh, after our room ID, we're gonna need our token, which is gonna be null right now, and our RTC UID. Okay, so we're joining a specific channel here. Once we join a channel, what I wanna do is actually get my local audio tracks, and I wanna publish them to that channel so all the remote users in that channel can actually get that audio track and then hear me speak when I'm speaking. So we're gonna go ahead and call audio tracks dot local audio tracks. So we're accessing this value right here. So right now it's null and we're gonna set that to uh, our actual microphone audio. So we're gonna call await and we can do Agora RTC. So we're accessing that class and we're doing create microphone audio track. So we're gonna create that microphone audio track and this is actually gonna ask me permission, at least on the first time when we go to this website for uh, access to my microphone. So we're gonna get that pop-up and this is the method that actually does it. So it's gonna take that return value and then set it here and then the audio track is now gonna be stored there. So after we do that, what I wanna do is I wanna publish that audio track. So if I get that track and set, here, set it here locally, the remote users aren't gonna see this or hear this yet. So we wanna go ahead and publish that and then we're gonna give them a way to actually receive that. So we're gonna call RTC client and we're gonna call publish. So we wanna publish our audio tracks. So we'll just do audio tracks dot local audio tracks. And let's see, I think I wanna just do tracks. So I'm gonna change this to not be plural because we're just gonna have our one audio track. So we're gonna change that to track and then the remote user will be tracks. So we're taking our local audio tracks that we just set. So we set that into that value we got the track and then we published it. So once we do that, uh, all I wanna do is go ahead and actually add this user to the DOM. So inside of this init RTC method, we're just gonna grab the members wrapper that we have in our HTML and we're just gonna append our new user to the DOM. So we're gonna get an element by ID and if we look at our index.html file, we have this members wrapper. So we're just gonna add the user in there. So get element by ID and we're gonna call members and in here, we're just gonna go ahead and call insert adjacent HTML. And we wanna specify the placement of it. So we'll just do before end. And I'll just try to scroll here. And then the actual element itself, what I'm gonna do is actually uh, create a container here. So we'll just call this user wrapper. And I wanna be able to specify or clean up this code a little bit. So we're gonna add that as the second parameter. So we're just adding this specific element before end inside of the members wrapper here. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually create that element here. So we're gonna create this div. So we'll create a div here. And in this div, let's actually just close this up here. Uh, first thing I wanna do is go ahead and actually pass in a paragraph tag for the user. So we wanna output the user itself. So we'll style this up later, but for now we just wanna be able to visually represent our user. So we'll create that paragraph tag, let's close it. And we're just gonna pass in 
the member ID. So the local RTC UID, that's the only way we have to identify that user. We don't have any specific names or anything like that. And inside of this paragraph tag, or actually for the div, we're gonna go ahead and add in a class for some styling. So we're gonna create this styling here. We already have the CSS for this. So we're gonna create a speaker that's gonna give us a styling for that. After we do this, we also want to add in another class for the user RTC UID. Uh, this is something that I'll explain later and why we need this specific value, but uh, let's just go ahead and pass in RTC UID. Now, we also need a specific ID for this element because when a user leaves, uh, we need a way to remove this user from the DOM. So what we're gonna do is identify that user by their UID and then find that element within our DOM and remove that element. So specifically, we need a RTC ID here. So let's go ahead and set this value and we're just gonna call this uh, by RTC UID. So that's gonna be the ID to the element. Uh, we have these values set and that should be good for now. So now we wanna go ahead and actually trigger this. So we wanna trigger this when this form is submitted. So anytime this form is submitted right now, we're not gonna actually add in the name here. Uh, we're just gonna add in an on submit event listener. When that form is submitted, we wanna go ahead and call this method and activate everything. So nothing's gonna happen until that form is actually submitted. So let's go ahead and uh, actually find that. So we'll just do lobby form and that's gonna be document dot get element by ID. Uh, right now that form has an ID of form and we're just gonna do, let's see, actually we'll just receive that form value and we're just gonna go ahead and create a new function that's gonna initialize all this and then we'll add the event listener to this. So give me one second, let's build this out. So we're gonna create a function and this is gonna be called enter room. So we wanna enter this room, I'll make it an async function here. We're gonna wanna take in the event itself and let's go ahead and create this. So when this form is submitted, we're gonna to wanna to call e.prevent default. So we don't wanna have the form perform its uh, normal functionality. We wanna prevent default. And then we just want to init RTC. So we're just gonna initialize this function when the form is submitted. So we're actually gonna trigger this function itself because there, there is gonna be more logic that we wanna to add to this. So we're gonna initialize that. And what we need to do is we actually want to go ahead and hide that lobby form. So whenever we submit, we want that form to go away and we want the room header to appear. So remember that this header is actually hidden. So we want it to appear when we join. So that way we have our leave buttons there and then we want the form to be hidden. So lobby form dot style and then we'll do dot display and this is gonna be set to none. So we wanna go ahead and hide that. Then we wanna go ahead and take that room header. So we'll do document dot get element by ID. That's gonna be room hyphen header. And we're just gonna do dot style dot display. And uh, we're just gonna display this as flex. So usually you just do block, but we actually want it to be a flex element. So we'll just do that. Don't wanna mess up our styling. And that should be it. So when we enter a room, we're gonna initiate RTC, hide the form, display the header, and then we wanna go ahead and add in the event listener. So we're just gonna do lobby form dot add event listener and on submit. So whenever that button is clicked, we have submitted our form and we're just gonna call enter room. Okay, so let's quickly recap that. We have our initiate RTC function. It just goes ahead and gets our local audio track. It publishes it, adds our member to the DOM. Then we call the function, hide the form, display the header. So the remote user won't actually be able to see or hear us just yet. At this point, it's just here. Usually with RTC, you can do video too. So I always mix that up. They won't be able to hear us yet. And that's because on that remote end, we need to actually listen for when that user joins and then subscribe to their tracks. But we'll take care of that in a second. So let's go ahead and actually run our development server. So we're gonna go ahead and call npm run dev. And let's just see what we have so far. So if I open this up here, this is our application. I wanna call inspect element. And if I'm seeing all this, it means that everything's working all right. So it means our Agora SDK is properly installed here. It's configured. Uh, if I hit enter room, hopefully we're gonna see something here that shows we're entering a room and no errors uh, pop up from that. So let's go ahead and click enter. And immediately what's gonna happen is Agora is gonna ask us to use our microphone. So you're gonna see this alert right here. And that's a good thing. So that's that create microphone and audio tracks method. And let's just go ahead and call allow. So that should happen on the first run here. So right away, I don't see any errors. So all this stuff is happening. This is the Agora SDK. Let's just kind of scroll through it. Uh, our header now appears and we see our local user here. 
So I can also leave. Well, actually the leave button doesn't work, but if I click enter, it's actually gonna go ahead and leave automatically and then I can re-enter a room. Now, at this point, I don't have the leave functionality in here, so we'll add that in. And you notice I have a new UID because I refreshed that. And if a remote user joins, we're actually gonna join the same channel, but we're not gonna see each other. So I'm gonna switch between the two tabs. The users don't see each other, so after we add in that exit functionality, we're gonna add in that ability to actually see the users in that channel. So let's go ahead and just hit enter. We'll refresh that. So everything's working correctly. We joined a channel and let's just go back to our code here. So the next thing I wanna do is create that leave functionality. So I'll just leave my server on here and we're gonna create the leave room function. So let's see, I wanna go ahead and add that underneath enter room. So we'll just go ahead and call let leave room. And let's just talk about everything that's gonna happen when we leave a room here. So First of all, uh, let's just go ahead and stop our audio tracks and then close them. So we're actually going to go ahead and call the audio tracks dot local audio tracks method here or that key right here. So we're going to get our local audio tracks and we're going to call stop. So that's going to stop our audio track from being published. Now, once we do that, we want to actually go ahead and close that specific audio track. So local audio track dot close. So stopping a track stops a track, but we can, in theory, uh, start it again. But once we call close, we need to create a new audio track. That track is closed and that's it. So we stop it and then we close that track. Now, after we close the track, what I want to do is go ahead and go to our client object here and we're just going to call the unpublished method. So this is going to go ahead and unpublish our track so our remote users will no longer have it. And once we call unpublish, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that specific channel. So we're going to call RTC client dot leave. So this is how we're taking care of all that functionality of leaving a channel altogether. So our remote user will respond to all of these events here in a second once we build that in. So once we do that, uh, what we wanna do is go ahead and display our form again. So we'll just do document dot get element by ID. We'll grab that form and we'll just do dot style dot display and we'll just do block. So once that form, or once we leave, we wanna make sure to display that form again so a user can rejoin. So we're kind of sending that user back to the lobby. Uh, we also wanna hide our header. So what I'll do is actually grab this right here and paste this down here. So on leave room, we'll just do display none. So we'll just kind of reverse that. And we're gonna go ahead and grab all our members. So document dot get element by ID. We'll get that members wrapper again. And we're just gonna go ahead and do uh, inner HTML, and we're just gonna set this to an empty string. So I just wanna remove all those members once we leave. So we're gonna leave the room. And last thing I need to do here is add in the event listener. So we'll just go ahead and get the leave icon. So inside of our HTML, our leave icon is called leave icon. So we'll grab that. So document dot get element by ID, leave icon. And we're just gonna go ahead and do add event listener and this is going to be on click so when we click this uh, we just want to go ahead and trigger the leave room functionality all right so let's go ahead and check this out i want to make sure i can leave and re-enter a room so we'll watch the console i'm going to enter a room and then when i leave it i can re-enter it so our user id is still the same and we can go back and forth but the remote users still can't see this user so let's go ahead and build out the functionality for this right here so at this point we have some event listeners that we can actually build out that respond to any time this user right here calls publish and then when we actually join a specific channel here so we're going to need to build in those event listeners and use the callbacks to trigger the functions we're about to create so let's jump into this init rtc method and the first event i actually want to listen for is whenever a remote user calls this join method so when they join i want all the other users in the channel to know about this and i want something to happen on the other end so what we're going to do first is actually create the event listener and then we'll create the corresponding function so we're going to call rtc client so within this init rtc method once everything is ready to go our client is ready let's go ahead and call the on method and we have uh, a bunch of different events we can actually listen for and this one is going to be user joined and the function that we want to trigger and we're about to create this is going to be called handle user joined so this is going to be that function that triggers anytime a user calls this method so we'll go ahead and create this handle user join function and we'll just see how this works and what it actually does so uh, let's go ahead and call handle user joined we'll make this an async function and one of the parameters we get access to is gonna be that user. So the user object that joined the remote user. And what I can actually do is go ahead and 
call, or we'll just console this out. We'll just do console.log. And we just want to see the new user. So we'll just say a new user has joined. And I actually just lost one of my keys and had to put that back on. So that threw me off. So we just want to see that current user. So what we're going to do is we'll open up two screens side by side and we'll join from one room and then we'll watch the console as the other user joins and we'll just see that event actually get fired off. So let's go ahead and open up one tab here. We'll bring in this next one. We can even make this one smaller and let's just go ahead and do inspect element. So right now nobody is inside of this room and we're just going to go ahead and see what happens. So we're going to enter our room. So we see some stuff happen in the console. And now this remote user, this one right here, user number two is going to join. So when we join, we see some stuff happen here in the console. So let's go ahead and look at this right here. So this message. So we'll just do a new user has joined and we want to take a look at that user object. So if I look at this right here, here is a user object. We see the UID for this user that's 682. Uh, there is going to be the audio track somewhere down here. So we have all this information about that user. So we can actually leave. And then if we try to join again, so let's actually refresh it. We'll enter. And then when this user enters, we see this callback get fired off. So that's what's happening. It's triggering that event for all those users. So what do I want to happen when this user joins? Well, right away, all I want to do here is I just want to see this remote user. So we're not actually subscribing to their audio tracks. We still won't hear them. I just want to make sure that new user gets added to the DOM. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we'll create a user wrapper. So I'm actually going to grab this value from the init RTC method. We're just going to take that same value right here and we're just going to go into this uh, members wrapper and we'll actually paste this in here. So when a new user joins, we want to create a new HTML element and then we want to go ahead and make sure they're added to the DOM. Now, this user object is going to change up a few things. We're not just getting our RTC UID. We're going to get the user UID method. So in the console, you saw that UID value. So we're just going to go ahead and update all of these. So let's save it and let's take a look at this. So now I can actually close this out. Uh, let's enter a room. And then when this user enters, let's go ahead and see what happens. There we go. So we see that remote user appear right here. So really quick before we move on, I just paused the video and I wanted to fix this error that I noticed in our code. And I want to show you what I'm talking about and then we'll make that quick fix. So when I enter from this screen right here and then I join with another user, we're going to notice this user appear on this user screen, but not back here. And that's really just in the placement of our code. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But really what should happen is this original user should also be visible right here. So I want to fix this. And then uh, we'll move on from there. So let's go ahead and go back into our code. And the issue is really just in the placement of where we added this event listener. I think it's just in the order that it's called. We just need to go ahead and add this right underneath our initialization of the RTC client. So let's go ahead and save it and let's give this a test. So when I join with user number one and then user number two, there we go. I should see that user on everybody's screen. So I'll join again. We'll enter. And there we go. All three users should see each other. So the next thing I want to do is make sure we can actually hear each other's audio. So let's go ahead and build in the event listener for that. So for this, the event listener is going to be RTC client dot on. And then this is going to be user published. So user dash published. So when the user publishes their audio, we're going to call a method called handle user published. And we're going to build this function right now. So with this function, what we want to do is simply respond to when a user publishes their track and subscribe to their track. So we need all the users to subscribe to each other's audio tracks in order to actually hear each other. So we'll add this underneath handle user joined. Let's go ahead and build this method out. So this is going to be let handle user published. We'll make sure it's an async function. And with this method, we get access to the user and then the media type. And the media type here is going to be an audio track. But when you are doing uh, video tracks, you typically want both the audio and video track. So that's why this value or parameter is actually useful to us. So when a remote user publishes their audio track, what we want to do is first have our client object subscribe to that track. Then we want to go ahead and set that remote track within this key value pair so we can actually store all those remote users. And then we want to play that track so we can actually hear it. So on publish, Let's first subscribe to that track. So on handle user published, we're going to go ahead and take our RTC client and we're going to call subscribe here. 
So we'll call subscribe. We're going to pass in the user and there's going to be a lot of values with that user object and we're going to pass in the media type. So the media type is either going to be audio or video. So it's just going to be a string. Now with RTC, a lot of people use this for video. So usually you want to check and see the media type itself because you do uh, play those tracks differently. So we're first going to check the media type. And if this is audio, this is how we're going to play that audio track. So it's just a good check to put in there just because uh, if you're using RTC video is a common thing and it's nice to be able to differentiate these two. So if the media type is audio, first let's go ahead and take our audio tracks here and we're going to get the remote audio tracks and we're going to set the user.uid and set this user's audio track. So this should be a unique value because it's the UID of that specific user. And within the array, we're going to take user.audio track and we're going to pass it in. So now we're actually going to store the user's audio track that was passed in through here, right? So they just published it. Now, the next thing we want to do is just go ahead and play the audio track. So we're going to call user dot audio track and we're going to call dot play. Okay. So that should go ahead and just play the audio track. And I probably should call a wait right here because I do need time to subscribe to this user's media track here or audio track. So we're going to call await right there and I'm going to give this a test and you should hear an echo right now. So I'm going to play this locally. So it should sound pretty bad, but at least uh, we're going to know that it works. So once you test this out locally, you might hear that echo and just go ahead and refresh the browser to leave. So let's go ahead and hit enter. We joined and then when the remote user joins, now we should hear it. So we hear that loud echo and I'm just going to go ahead and refresh it to leave. So the audio track is working. We can now see the user. We're subscribing to their track, but look what happened here. So I just left and my user is still within this browser right here. So a user can join and leave, but that stays. So we want to subscribe to one more event and that is going to be the user left event. So when a user leaves that specific channel, we want to make sure that this right here, I guess that wrapper or the user speaker wrapper is just removed. So we want to know when a user leaves. So let's go ahead and take care of that. And for this, we're going to go ahead and add in one more event listener. And let's see, we'll go back up to an RTC and we're just going to add this in right here. So RTC client and dot on, this is going to be user dash left. So when a user leaves, we're going to call the handle user left function. And let's just go ahead and build out this function. So we'll keep this in order. We have user joined, user published, and we're going to create handle user left and we're going to make this an async function we're going to go ahead and pass in the user object finish up this function and we're going to do two things here so this is going to be a very simple method here the first thing is is we want to go ahead and go into this audio track right here and we want to go ahead and simply remove the user from this audio track so all the remote audio tracks we want to get that user by the uid and remove that track from here so Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to bring this back up here to handle user left and we're going to call delete and we'll go into audio tracks dot remote audio tracks and we have the user's UID. So we're just going to go ahead and delete it. We call that delete method. And then what we want to do is actually remove the user's DOM element. So you notice that I specifically put in an ID with a user's UID. So that means every single wrapper for each user has a specific UID and we're just, we're just going to go ahead and remove it by that where it's going to be an ID, but the value is going to be that user's UID, which should be unique. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to go ahead and grab that element document dot get elements by ID. And we're going to pass in the user dot UID value and we're just going to call remove. So let's go ahead and save it and let's test this out now. So we'll go back here. Let's go ahead and close this console out. We're going to enter a room. We see our user. We're going to enter with this user. We'll hear an echo. When I leave, that user should be gone now. So I'll go ahead and leave with this user. And let's go ahead and enter and enter here. And we'll leave. And there we go. So now as users join and leave, we actually stop listening to their audio track and we actually remove them from the DOM. So that's it for this video. In the next video, what we're going to do is work on the volume indicator. So right now, uh, my volume is technically playing, but there's no way of knowing what user is talking uh, in a video. Maybe you can see somebody speaking. So that's kind of your indicator, but we want to highlight each user and we're just going to use this green color that's going to turn on every time you speak and then turn off every time uh, you're done talking. So we'll do that in the next video. So I'll see you there.